I'm Cash. I'm Livia. I'm Jake. I'm Taryn. I'm Lily. I'm Nico. I'm Riley. I'm Romeo. I'm Reese. I'm Bennett. I'm Lorelai. I'm Brooks. I'm Savannah. And I'm Ryan. Welcome to this episode of MAG TV. Oh, that's for the school year. I'm Nate. And I'm Riley. We have a busy final episode. We're going to show you the plan for fifth grade promotion, and we'll look back on a year that had a lot of changes happen all throughout. We'll also have our teacher feature with the teacher of the year, find out your summer plans, bring you dad jokes, and take you to the principal's office one final time. But first, with a look back at some of the other things that happened around campus this month, here's Romeo. Thanks guys. As the school year wraps up, there was a lot of final things to check off the to-do list. That includes day testing, which we all did. It also included a bunch of really neat field trips, including the second graders who visited the USS Midway in downtown San Diego. How did the field trip turn out? Oh, it was amazing. We learned so many things. Would you recommend to go again? Absolutely. All of second grade went, and um, I think every grade would go because every grade has specific things that they can learn about for their grade level. Is really amazing. We also took some time off to honor of Memorial Day. And we had our open house to show off all the amazing things we accomplished this school year. And the MAG TV team also found out we were nominated for nine Ivy Awards. We are proud to have won four over the past two years. We'll find out if there are more honors coming Magnolia's way in the awards ceremony. From MAG TV, I'm Romeo. Back to you guys. Thanks, Romeo. As we wrap up the school year, we're all saying goodbye to the fifth graders. Our time at Magnolia is coming to an end, so what can we expect? Here's your details on the fifth grade promotion. Thanks, Nathan. Things are getting back to the way they used to be with fifth grade promotions. Next week, it's going to be back indoors with the promotion ceremony set for the new multi-purpose room. What do parents and students need to know about the ceremony? So uh, students will be doing a whole rehearsal with their fifth grade teachers before the ceremony, so they'll be all ready to go. I think the most important thing for families to be aware of with regards to promotion is that uh, because we have limited seating this year, each student is going to get two tickets, and those tickets will be really important uh, for whichever family members are coming to the promotion ceremony. We'll only be allowed to accommodate two uh, tickets per student. We are also working though to have set up a live feed so for people who can't come in person to the ceremony or maybe family members or grandparents who live out of state they'll be able to log on and check out the ceremony as well. Awesome! How do you feel saying goodbye to the fifth graders? Uh, you know what I, I feel a little bit it, you know it's a little bittersweet and especially with this group of fifth graders because this group of fifth graders is the first group of students uh, that was here as kindergartners my first year here. So this is the first group of kids that have gone through their entire time at Magnolia uh, with me being here as the principal. So it, it'll be a little bit bittersweet to say goodbye to those kids, but I know they're going to do a great job in middle school. The promotion ceremony is next week on Wednesday the 8th at 8.30 a.m. For Mag TV. I'm Jake. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jake. Before the year ends, we all had a chance to show off some of the work we did. Here's Ryan with a look at the art show, which returned for the first time in three years. Thanks, Riley. Everyone here in Magnolia got so creative with their art projects this year, led by Mrs. Dudley. And we got to put it on display for all of our fellow Magnolia Lions and their families to see. How much work went into putting on the art show? Well, I would say a lot of work um, throughout the school year. You guys did an awesome job, put in a lot of time on all the artwork from kindergarten to fifth grade. And then um, this week, a bunch of like parents and I spent probably about 50 hours setting up, wrapping tables and putting up artwork. So a lot of time, but it looks good. How do you feel seeing all the work done by the students? I feel pretty proud. You guys did awesome. Um, just really happy and proud, I think, is the best way to explain it. Hi, Sawyer. What was your favorite art project this year? Um, it was probably this one. Why do you like that one? Because we probably took the most time on it. Probably the sunflowers, because we had to draw the lines and put glue on it and use the chocolate cells to color it in. It was really fun. 
Hi Quinn, how did you feel seeing your artwork up for everyone to see? Um, I thought it was really cool to see everyone else's artwork and I thought it was cool to see my own. The art show was a part of the open house and was on display for days. Great work everyone. For MAG TV, I'm Ryan. Back to you guys. Thanks Ryan. We have so many great people here on campus, but we are all so happy to see Ms. Hatcher when she came back to work. Ms. Hatcher had cancer. She was out for a few months getting treatment. But she beat it. We're lucky to have her back. Ella got a chance to talk to her about it. Hi, Ms. Hatcher. We're so glad you're back. Thank you. I am so glad to be back. How did you feel when you returned? Um, honestly, I'm really tired. I struggled with coming back to work. I was gone for three months, and that was really hard for me to be away. But um, just exhausted. The cancer was a hard thing to deal with. And... Now that I'm back, I have more energy being around students and feeling so much better now that I'm back. What can you tell us about what you went through? Well, I had tonsil cancer and I had to take off three months of work for chemotherapy and radiation. And that lasted for a few months. And here is my beautiful mask that I had to wear during the radiation, which was kind of strange and then the chemotherapy was you know they put in stuff in your body to kill the cancer and the tumor and they were able to kill it all and um, I'm cancer free now so I definitely made it through it. Wow that seems like a lot you went through but we're so glad that you're better. What is next for you? Well I'm planning to be back here at Magnolia and Jefferson Elementary next year and working with all the new students that are coming in and making sure you guys are doing great over at the middle school. Do you need further treatment? For the next five years, I have to go back for the first year every month and they do something called a scope. And the scope is where they check to make sure there's no tumors or you know any cancer cells coming back. So it's a five year process, but hopefully everything will come back clean and I won't have any more problems. We all hope that too. What can students and parents learn from your experience? I think the biggest thing is that you have to keep a positive mindset. I know that that's one of my biggest things that I've been talking to you guys about is changing the way you think about things, the way you act on things. So when you think about things positively versus negative thoughts, it changes. And while I was gone, I ended up getting Everyone at the school did chain links of positive affirmations for me, and they were delivered to my house. So I have over 500 of these links that you guys did for me. So students, by far, they're getting it. You've got to stay positive. I have hundreds and hundreds of cards that were given to me as well. I mean, I, I can't even tell you how many cards are over there. So between the cards and the calls and the text and stuff like this, staying positive is the most important thing for parents and students. Thank you, Ella. It was another year of major changes as we navigated COVID into the end of the construction project. Brooks has a look back at the year. Hi guys, with a lot of progress made against COVID, we're now getting to do a lot of things we haven't been able to do for the past couple of school years. In addition to activities that have been canceled since 2020, we started the year with masks on and are ending it with no requirement to wear them. We are also pretty limited in what we could do this year for assemblies, but we did get to see the high flying fun once again. We had our jogathon where we raised a record 77,000 for our school. We saw the first ever team back. That's the second, third, and fourth grade combo that may become the model for other schools around Carlsbad. And we wrapped up the construction project getting back to normal with a lot of great changes made around campus. Those are just some of the highlights. All in all, a great year around Magnolia. For Mag TV, I'm Brooks. Back to you, Riley. Thanks, Brooks. We also found out who our Teacher of the Year is. And Lily is with the winner, Miss Reigns. <laughs> Thanks guys and congratulations to Mrs. Reigns. Thank you very much.
did you feel when you found out? Um, I was actually kind of embarrassed. <laughs> I don't, as loud as Mrs. Reigns is, the recognition was embarrassing, and everyone was clapping and looking at me, and I turned all red. <laughs> where would you put one six plus five six? What should I do here? How would you describe your teaching style? I think I'm loving, but I have high expectations, and the kids rise up to them, and we work hard in this class. How long have you been teaching? Uh, 21 years, 16 in Marietta, 5 now at Magnolia. Where did you go to school? Uh, I got my bachelor's degree at Chapman University, and then I got my credential and my master's degree at CSU San Marcos. So if one of my angles is 20... Why do you think students succeed in your class? Um, because I feel like I foster a loving environment where they can take risks and work hard and we just have a lot of fun while we're doing it. Would you like to play a game and say that? Of course. Books or movies? Books. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Biking or walking? Biking. Watching sports or playing sports? Playing sports. Summer or winter? Summer all the way. <laughs> Snowboarding or surfing? Surfing. Thank you, Mrs. Reigns, and congratulations. From MAG-TV, I'm Lily. Back to you. Thanks, Lily. We want to remind you that the last day of the school year is next Thursday, June 9th. And just so you know, the first day of school next year will be August 24th. But first, we all have summer on our minds. What are your summer plans? That's the question we asked in this final edition of the Lions Trip. I'm gonna go to Hawaii for a week. I'm gonna go surfing and get barreled. Um, I'm gonna go to baseball and uh, science camp. I have a baseball tournament for the All-Star team. I have two friends that are coming over from like far away and we're gonna hang out and go to the river. Play on my couch and play with my cat. Play soccer. Um, to go surfing. Um, I'm going to Mexico. Beach and then um, I might have a play date. Um, I'm going to go to the beach and go surfing with my family. I'm going to go to my grandma and grandpa's house. To go to Hawaii. Um, I'm probably going to go camping and then go to the beach. I'm going to go to Santa Fe for about a week and I'm going to go to the beach a lot. I might go to Lake Powell. We're going to Santa Cruz! As you think about your summer plans, did you know the Carlsbad Library has a summer reading adventure program? We went to check it out and spoke with the head librarian who also happens to be a Magnolia dad. Hi Mr. Williamson, what is this summer reading adventure all about? The summer reading adventure is a way that kids can stay engaged with their academic pursuits by reading and doing fun activities at the library and earning incentives for it. How can kids get involved? Well, it starts June 13th and it runs until August 6th. Then they can either come to the library to sign up or they can sign up online. Does it have to be in person or can it be anywhere? Um, you can do it either in person or you can also do it online, either as an option. So if you do it online, you would come and pick up your prizes and incentives here in person at the library. In this reading program, how do we track our progress? So you track your progress online through a program called Beanstack. So you just um, track the number of hours you've been reading or the activities you've done. Why is it important for kids to do it over the summer? so they can stay smart all year long and succeed academically. What can you earn from this program? So there are a lot of cool rewards like this awesome fan, frisbee, lantern, hat, and a bag. That's so cool. Have you seen kids make a lot of progress? Yeah, we've always had a great amount of participation. We've had over 1,500 to 2,000 kids, and historically they've read over a million pages. Thank you, Mr. Williamson. We'll see you, and we'll see all of you at the library. Summertime is also a chance to get a break from dad jokes. Unless you live with a dad who tells a lot of them. Here's my dad with our dad jokes of the month. All right, did you guys know that all happy people have the same blood type? You know that? It's B positive. What has one head, one foot, 
and four legs. A bed. How does a penguin build a house? It glues it together. Why does Waldo always wear a striped shirt? He doesn't want to be spotted. Very close, though. Very close. <laughs> what did the duck say when, when he bought chapstick at the store? Hey, can you just put it on my bill? What did the police officer say to his belly button? You're under a vest. <laughs> Which state has the smallest soft drinks? Minnesota. Yeah. Why do cows have hooves and not feet? Because they can fly out. No, it's because they lack toes. <laughs> I actually have to tell you guys, young people are no help around here. Like I've been asking people around campus, what does IDK stand for? And nobody, nobody has the answer. Nobody has the answer. They keep saying, I don't know. I just want you guys to know, as I teach you here at Mag TV, that dreams really can come true. Because when I was a kid, I wanted to play the piano really badly. And now as an adult, I play the piano really badly. Do you guys know that Apple's working on a car? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, the Apple car. The only problem is it doesn't have any windows. No! <laughs> what did one Dorito farmer say to the other? Yes. Cool Ranch. Last one, I'm gonna leave you guys with some really good life advice, okay? Okay, before you criticize someone, you should first walk a mile in their shoes, okay? That way, if they get mad, you're a mile away and you have their shoes. <laughs> thank you guys very much. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't forget, if you have a dad or a mom with bad jokes or if you have any sort of story idea to share with us as we head into the new school year, email us at magtvcarlsbad at gmail.com or tell one of the members of the Mag TV team. Finally, it's time to take you to the principal's office one more time this year. Here's Mr. Nelson in his final words of wisdom of the school year. Hey guys, I decided today for our final words of wisdom, I'm going to let you in on my biggest secret. It's something I've been holding on to for a long time, but I'm going to share it with you guys because I think it makes all the difference in the world. And that is that you as students have way more power than you even realize you do. And here's what I mean by that. Guys, a lot of times I notice that people tend to make themselves a victim with things. They like to point fingers at other people, complain about things that are outside of their control. And when they do that and they take away any kind of personal responsibility and blame it on things outside of their control, they become a victim. They have no control over what's happening around them. But what I want to encourage you guys with is that you have all the control because the control you have is that you choose how to think and how to respond to situations. You choose your own attitude. You choose the way you respond to things. So rather than being a victim, figure out how you can be part of the solution, how you can step in and make positive change in the things that are happening around you. You have all the change and you'll change the world. Have a great summer guys. It's been an awesome year and we'll see you next year. Thanks Mr. Nelson. And that does it for this final edition. I'm Riley. And I'm Nathan. We hope you have a great and safe summer and we'll see you in the new school year for our next edition of MAG TV. And go Lions! Oh, that's me. <laughs> Hi guys, with a lot of things... <sighs> Hi there and welcome to... <sighs> Thanks, Mrs. Reigns. Wait, yeah. Did you know about... Okay. Uh, testing. Testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Our time at Magnolia is coming to... I really will. Hola.
And just so you know, the first day of school... I'm so sorry. Okay, focus on the words. I want to tell you something super important. This is going to make all the difference in your life. Choose the teams that you root for wisely. Don't choose teams that are going to disappoint you and disappoint your friends, like the Kansas City Chiefs. Thanks, guys. As the school year is here... Oh, wait, hold on. Hi, Quinn. How'd you feel... Oh, my gosh. Hi, Quinn. How'd you feel... Oh, my gosh. Hi, Quinn. How'd you feel seeing your... <laughs> Hi, Quinn. How'd you feel seeing... <laughs> And go, go Lions! Lions. Uh, I think we okay. second time. Oh my god, there's a scrap!